All right, guys, we have a special edition of all these pickups, two card shows and also a mail day. Tons of cards. There's even stuff off the camera that you guys can see over there. But uh, let's start going through this stuff. First, I got this from the card show. Subscriber of the channel, Kevin, gave it to me. It's old cigarette card values. Really, really cool because now I can start looking and learning a little bit more about some of the different sets that I don't know about. The price is all the way back from 2001, so don't trust the prices, but it'll tell me like what cards are rarer. Really, really good research tool, so I, I appreciate it. And with that out of the way, let's go over the first section, which were live card show consignment cards. Now, I go live every weekend that I'm at a show, sometimes Saturday, sometimes Sunday. Depends on the shows that I go to and I try to help you guys find some cards along the way. So first off, we got a Topps Giant of Willie Mays. Really good shape in this one. As you can see that over there. Really cool from 1964. Another oversized one. It was Apricio Autograph. This was like a $40 purchase for this postcard. Signed as well. So, I mean, I don't know how much it costs to slab these, but I thought that was a pretty good deal. Next stack of singles. I'm gonna shift some of these cards over. You can see more of this over here. Got a Deion Sanders game used. I thought this is pretty sick. Kurt Flood. A Rocky Marciano. Great condition on this one. Ken Boyer from 1955. Beautiful Roger Maris. Now, there's a little surface wrinkle going across right there. Barely noticeable, like unless you put it in the right lighting. I mean, you guys can see it a little bit on the camera, but this card is a sweet looking three. Another three of Eddie Matthews, just a comparison, right? Like I know this is a blackboard card, but these are the same grade. Like I appeal wise, that Maris is one of the nicest looking threes I've ever seen. But uh, 53, Eddie Matthews, his second card. So we got two Ted Simmons. Willie Mace from 1955. Getting a 56, Gil Hodges. The 53, Gil Hodges. And also a 1954, Gil Hodges. Our last consignment this is Jerry Rice, and you guys can see how nice this looks for seven and a half. Really, really good. It is a little off centered, but you can look at the subgrades nine, eight and a half, nine, and the centering is a seven. So I think this is a good uh, crack and re slab candidate for this Jerry Rice, even on the back. Very, very sharp looking. So I thought this was a great purchase. So, again, if you guys want to get some cards, make sure to join the lives. 10% commission plus shipping, and that's it. So be on the lookout for those. Up next are some of the cards that I purchased. Now, a lot of these are available. Some of them are going to my PC. Kind of depends. Some of them already have sold. I bought some stuff for other people that could make the lives. Troy Palomalo rookie card. Got Aaron Judge. Now, by the way, look at how thick these are. It's crazy. So... I will be getting these out of these. Just need to get a screwdriver and put them in normal cases. But these things are massive, just for comparison, right? Like this is a slab. This is the case that it's in. And uh, like this is a thicker card, by the way. So, yep, these were heavy to carry around all day. They're Aaron Judge, Russell Wilson, RPA. A Joe Burrow Immaculate four color patch. Thought this one was really cool. Jim Palmer, Brooks Robinson. This is the type of stuff I'd keep for my PC, but picked up some better stuff, in my opinion, that for long term. But I'll show you guys that soon. This one's already sold. 1960 Bob Gibson. Really good shape, but just has a crease on the back. And this also sold as well. A 69 Reggie Jackson. 
Always a super liquid card for me. Anytime I pick one up, literally sell within a day or so. Up next, some really cool Negro League cards. So these will be up for sale. I know some of these ones, I think they believe they're called Helmar Brewing Company. They make a lot of custom cards, and but this is like some of the first sets that they had. You know, someone asked me for the Gibson and the Page, so I'll have to reach back out to whoever one of those. Not otherwise, let me know, but two of those on that side of things. This whole stack, I believe it's gonna be mostly my PC. So I wanted to show you guys these cards because they're really, really cool. These are old time Black Stars from 1974. Kind of like one of your first mainstream sets of some of the different Negro Leaguers. Now a lot of these guys had passed away. Some of them like played really early 1900s. But the thing is like with Negro League cards, a lot of them are foreign releases and extremely, extremely tough. Not everyone even has a card. For example, Josh Gibson's first card is in 1950. And then his second card is in the set from 1974. So you guys can see some of the different stuff on them. And they're tough because of the, the darker borders. So any type of wear will show on them. But uh, they made two sets, one in 1974 and one in 1978. And you can see there's a bio on the back as well. This guy just made the Basketball Hall of Fame, which is pretty cool as well because a uh, dual sport athlete. But I picked up mostly the Hall of Famers or like the bigger names that I recognized or people that I think are going to make the Hall of Fame one day. So I'll show you those cards in a second. Those aren't part of the set. And I'll show you the 1978s as well. So... I believe this was one of the 78s, and you guys can tell on the back. Over here, different numbers. And also the imagery on these. So there's those. Leon Day. Definitely want to get one of his playing day cards. He has a ton of them available, but they're scarce and they're expensive. So I'll just keep going through these, but they're so cool. Like cool Papa Bell, one of the bigger names in the set. Josh Gibson's second card. So we'll get the $18 slab treatment. I think Papa Bell will as well. I'll have to see some of the other ones. But I'll make a whole video on what I'm gonna do on that side of things. My explanation on why I'm getting some of these $18 slabs. So like 20 or so Hall of Famers and over time, you know, if I can get some of the playing day cards, awesome. If not, you know what? I'm kind of contempt. These are older cards, 1974, and I know how rare they are. So all into my PC with those two 1943 cards. Don't know too much about them. I think they are from Cuba. Don't know the players on them, uh, but these will be for sale. Unfortunately, can't keep everything. And when you put 20 cards in your PC, well, more than 20, you'll see some other PC stuff. Can't do that. So another one there, 1952 Bowman. I thought this was really cool. So. This is from 1931 or 32. And that's a Pruchu Cepeda. Now, apparently in Puerto Rico, this guy was a mixture of like a Babe Ruth and a Ty Cobb. Could hit for power and also just run the bases extremely, extremely well. But there's no stats back then. No one really kept track of that type of stuff. This guy's not a Hall of Famer by any means but just kind of cool history. So Pedro Cepeda is full name and his son is actually in the Baseball Hall of Fame. So Orlando Cepeda made the Hall of Fame. Pedro is not, but super, super tough card. And I'm not gonna find this again. So I decided to keep it in my PC. All right, we're going into some of the slabs. We have a 73 Clemente. This one has already sold. A 1969 Ryan. We'll always asking about this card as well. 1960 Willie Mays. 1984 Update Roger Clemens. 
59 Clemente. A cheap 1948 Ruth. Everyone knows how expensive the Leafs are, but I paid around like $100 for this one. So that was a pretty good deal. 1965 Mantle. Another one from the set in A2. I will be making this one available, so let me know if you're interested in that. Got an FF of Bill Ripken. You guys can see that over there. Another one of these. Now, the story behind the player on the card, and I think it was in like 42 or 43, hit 470, like 472 or somewhere around there in the 470s. And now that Negro League and MLB stats are integrated, this is the highest batting average ever in a season. Not a ton of stats available, but I thought it was a pretty cool piece of history. And it's a three. Again, blackboard cards from Venezuela. Straight into the PC. And then another one over here. This guy was a legend in Latin America. And that also will be held into my PC. Oldest living Negro Leaguer as well. They've lived at like 105. So pretty cool. Now we're on to the mail day side of things. We're going to start off from a 1926 Spalding Champions. Now, this guy dominated the first Winter Olympics. Card's not worth a ton, but there's also a mention of Pavo Nermi, which is one of the greatest runners of all time. And they considered him the Pavo Nermi on the ice. If you look at him, he just dominated the first two Winter Olympics. So that was kind of cool. I mean, it was a very, very cheap pickup. And also, by the way, the size on these, I thought they were going to be a lot larger. Like you can see, just like a standard size card right here. But we'll go into this, the cricket cards that I picked up next. So, 1965 Scanlons. I've wanted some of these for a while. And some finally showed up on the U.S. eBay. There's stuff on Australian eBay, but a lot of these guys won't ship over to the U.S. Or they just charge crazy amounts. But I wanted the Sobers for a while and some of the other All-Famers and was able to pick them up. This is an upgrade in my PC. I already have the Napoleon, but mine has a pin hole in it. I paid like a few dollars for it, but this one does not. A lot better imagery and example. That's kind of cool. Another upgrade to my PC. Jumbo Bat. And numbered it to 20 from Flawless. So, pretty cool. These I picked up. Uh, pretty much flip there's such a great deal on them I and mean, i picked up the cabrera for like 25 dollars. most of his stuff autos are like 50 plus so there's that one and earlier in his career obviously with the marlins and the sellers also having this jim rice hall of famer tribute it was super cheap pickup so there's that and my one of my favorite cards that i got a 1972 Led Zeppelin in a PSA 8. Sticker card grading is really, really tough right now. I know people are sending in stuff that looks mint that are getting twos or threes, which is crazy to me. Uh, so decided to bite the bullet on this 1972. 8 is a really, really high grade. One of Zeppelin's first cards, their first Panini sticker. And this thing looks mint. Looks great. You guys can see that, but... Oh, and real quick, I also picked up all these boxes. So, we got 2010 Sterling. I know brand new Sterling is super expensive. There hasn't been any sales of this, so I thought it was a pretty good deal. Two Diamond King boxes, and also four of these Platinum Anniversary of Topps Chrome. So, be on the lookout for these videos on the channel. And if you want to join the break, make sure to check out my Card Shop Live profile in the description.